Hello, everyone. Welcome to this discussion about VMware Cloud and its vision of any app, any cloud. My name is Satish Resta. I'm a senior staff multi-cloud architect here at VMware. And along with me, I have Shazal Devnath, who is staff multi-cloud architect with VMware. Welcome, Shazal. Hey, thank you, Satya, for having me here. We are going to create a series of videos on VMware Aria suite of products, their use cases, and how to use them. But before we do so, we wanted to talk about multi-cloud in today's aspect and VMware's take on multi-cloud. Keeping that in mind, in this video, we'll discuss about VMware's multi-cloud vision and strategy and VMware's capabilities to deliver uh, the same vision and strategy to our customers and partners. Okay, let's get started. All right, so what is multi-cloud? So multi-cloud means when a customer is using more than one cloud. They may start from one cloud, but eventually, if they start using or consuming services from another cloud, whether it be from public cloud vendor or from you know, a different private cloud vendor, that is multi-cloud. That is the basic definition of multi-cloud, right? How do, how do you define multi-cloud in your world? You are absolutely right. If I have more than one public cloud, that becomes a multi-cloud environment for me. But what is important, and this comes from Wikipedia, a single heterogeneous architecture, keep that in mm -hmm. mind. These public clouds are heterogeneous environments. But then, can you just take us through the benefits? What do the organizations benefit from these multi-cloud environments? Yeah, basically, so they're moving to multi-clouds for various reasons. One of the main reasons is a rich sets of developer services that this multi-cloud environment offers. It always has specialized sets of services that our developers may be using it. Uh, similarly, uh, in Google, they may be using things like ML, AI, analytical tools, right? So various cloud has various speciality and developers want to use this rich set of services to develop a new and modernized apps. So that's one. The next one is the facility uh, with this public cloud is, they are self-service. They can just go and spin up and down resources as and when needed, right? That gives them that self-service mechanism where they can spin up and down resources as and when needed, right? How do you define the immense scalability? So modernization applications, who modernizes the applications? The developers. Mm. What do they get by going in these public clouds? Is that services that you mentioned, right? Which, if you want to build in-house, it takes a long time, investment, planning. But then you go there and you just consume them. You just self-service them. Along with that, say, I am building an application and I want to test that application. I want to scale up. Or I have customers. I get more work or more demand. I can scale out as for my requirement. That scalability that these public cloud providers provide is a very valuable service. And then the last one is the global geographic availability. Right? I want to expand my business. I want to reach out to another customers from another continent. Do I build up a data center there? No, I can simply go ahead and use these existing data centers that these hyperscalers already have. Take benefit of that. So overall, all these benefits are really available when you go to cloud. And then the reason that the multi-cloud is, as you mentioned, the set of capabilities that some cloud providers provide, someone else provides it better, and then someone else has uh, availability somewhere. So that's why it all leads to the multi-cloud benefits on that we see today. Then uh, what, what is uh, today's multi-cloud environment like? We talked about how customers may be using multi-cloud, you know, sometimes by force, sometimes by uh, without even them knowing it. But uh, how does today's multi-cloud environment look like then if they are using organically that way? This is what it looks today, right? Mm. Have distributed infrastructure across all these clouds, all these presence. It may be your private cloud as well. And then you have your applications distributed across all these uh, infrastructure. You have your workforce who can be anywhere today because of the situation that you had in the past. And then your customers are all over um, the globe. You cannot say that your customers should access your local services from one location only. So that is today's reality. One point to note from this slide is the discreteness of these solutions. I say they are discrete data centers in the cloud. That's what reality today, today's multi-cloud environment, that's how it looks. Now, that kind of environment brings in new challenges. So would you like to talk about the challenges that this kind of environment brings? Yeah, absolutely. So heterogeneity is the, is the theme here, as we see here, right, with these various cloud vendors. The first thing is the choice of cloud. So which app should go to what cloud, right? And how do you deploy that in, in, the, in that cloud? That, that could be a major challenge. The other one is consistently deploying that app 
in different environments, in different public cloud environments, and maintaining the policies, security policies, networking policies, application policies across the cloud and the cloud resources, the consistency, right? That okay. is super important and it's really hard to maintain that in multi-cloud environment. The other one is uh, balancing cost versus the performance, the application performance that we are looking for and optimizing both costs as well as optimizing the performance. When you go to multiple cloud to maintain the cost, it becomes really hard. And the last point about global view of cost and security is mainly around uh, monitoring and measuring the costs in the public cloud. That also becomes challenge when you are using multiple clouds. Every cloud has their own cost structures, different service are metered differently, right? So understanding the cost in multiple cloud environment, it becomes very challenging. So these are main challenges that we see in today's multi-cloud environment with our customers. Have you got anything to add here? Yeah, I know uh, you covered it um, really well. Uh, one point to note here is you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. That's why this multi-cloud came. Cloud is not your magic bullet. Yeah. We have seen traditionally that people go to cloud and think that um, this is solved, going to solve all their problems. It does not. The cost, the performance, and then availability. Nobody talks about uh, availability. We, we have seen uh, outages from these big public clouds that Absolutely. has taken out of a like, lot of servers that will make them, a lot of companies that will make them. So that yeah. brings this new set of challenges that we see. What happens when you go to public cloud, you think that you get the value instantly, right? That's the expectation. But then due to operational inconsistencies that you mentioned, different skill sets that you need, all these cloud providers, they provide similar set of services, but different ways of implementation. So you mm-hmm. need specialized skill sets to understand how it works in this. Uh, say, for example, a role-based access control is different how it's implemented in Azure, the way it's implemented is in AWS or GCP. You need yeah. to have that specialized skill set to understand that. Yes. Each of these public clouds, they have their own tools for management, but they need to understand that. So mm-hmm. your time to value is increased, and then you are at higher risk because you never know whether your security policies are consistent. Because as an organization, you have your own security policies, same set of standards, some set of standards. You need to apply the same set of standards across these public clouds. How do you ensure that it has? And then the cost portion that you mentioned, um, our expectation is the cloud would be cheaper, but it is not. You can talk, can you talk about that, how it's not so cheaper, that misconception about cloud being cheaper. Yes. So many people, many customers, they actually embark on cloud journeys thinking that cloud is cheaper, right? They can manage costs effect- effectively. But in reality, what we are seeing with the customer is they go there, they start spending resources, and suddenly, you know, the cloud becomes expensive. The, the bills that they receive at the end of the month is much higher than what they expected. Other thing about cloud is, yes, it's, it's scalable. It's easy to spin up resources. But the problem is... Uh, the responsibility, right? Uh, the developer may have spun up, let's say, hundreds of virtual machines in the cloud and they forgot about it. And suddenly, you know, uh, the infrastructure team gets the bill shock saying, oh, there are so many virtual machines just lying there and no one knows how it came up there, right? So things like that can happen, the control. And because of that, there will be bill shocks that many customers, they experience with that. So what's the solution? What, what we can do to solve those problems? Those heterogeneous environments, if we make them homogeneous, so the challenges that we have seen, we can solve a lot of challenges in a single shot. The operational inconsistency, the security inconsistency, the specialized uh, skills requirements, all of those can be solved if I can have a homogeneous environment. And that's exactly what VMware is trying to do. Mm-hmm. We have all these environments, um, you know, public cloud environments, private cloud environments, partners, and then you have the services that are running on top of that, which is visibility, need visibility operations, automation, security, governance, and all of that. And then what matters is the application. You have your existing application and um, modern application, uh, application modernization projects. So what VMware gives you are trying to bring is consistency about all of that. So you are getting a consistent infrastructure. That homogeneity that we talked about is there. It's a homogeneity on real infrastructure as well as the container infrastructure, and then homogeneity in operations. What you get is a consistent customer developer model, which matters to the customers or matters to the business. So the VMware Cloud is all about that homogeneity. Yep. So, can you please talk about what this uh, VMware Cloud and any cloud cloud? Yeah, so how do you bring that homogeneity in 
all the clouds, across the cloud, right? No matter it is your customer data center or partner data center or your public cloud. So to bring that homogeneity, uh, what we have is a VMware Cloud Foundation, in short, VCF. That exact VCF can be spun in the public cloud as well. So public cloud vendors such as AWS, Azure, it could be on Google for that matter, right? Or any other big hyperscalers, we have that partnership going on. So the same VCF is the building block on both private cloud infrastructure as well as public cloud infrastructure. All the big hyperscalers, you can see Oracle, Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud, all of the big hyperscalers, right? So, so same VCF is spread across the crowds. That means if you are already using a certain monitoring tool, a certain backup tool, or certain networking monitoring tools, or logging tools, et cetera, you can bring the same existing tools to manage the, the public cloud environment as well, right? Not only that, if your employees are already good with VMware skills, the same skills can be used here, right? So no need of extra training for them. This is how the homogeneity come into play in terms of managing the infrastructure, in terms of deploying the infrastructure, and also in terms of life cycling the whole ecosystem. So you put the same VCF into these hyperscalers data center, that means they are closer to their services. So whatever exactly. services you are consuming, now you are closer to them. So your application is more tightly integrated with the native services. That is interesting aspect. Hmm, thank you, Satya. Absolutely. And we can see a lot of lot of our customers' partners, uh, they are innovating, right? Uh, on the public cloud side, uh, creating interesting services and then consuming it from the VMware cloud environment. Yep. So that is interesting. And then that brings us to this slide where you can see that we have these public cloud providers. They are global infrastructure. It's yes. not a single infrastructure, global infrastructure. And then you uh, have your own private data centers, be it your mm -hmm. data center or any partner, your presence in partner data center. And then you take the same cloud infrastructure that VMR provides across all of that. And then you build your ecosystem of products on top of that and to build the solution. So you see exactly. your application platforms, um, you have the TANS of VMR TANS offerings, which directly gives you the application platform. You have your VMR IA set of suite of products, which gives you the cloud management across everything. So you have the same platform across all of these areas. You have your security and networking. So VMware HCX, um, SDWAN, NSX. So your consistency. So the main mm -hmm. point is consistency. You get the consistent infrastructure underlay. You get the consistent management layer, management and operations layer on top of that. That homogeneous view solves the problems that multi-cloud heterogeneity inherently introduces. So mm -hmm. VMware Cloud provides that homogeneity in the infrastructure layer and homogeneity at the management and operations layer. So this brings to the end of this discussion for today's video. So we discussed about how VMware brings that homogeneity and consistency across multiple clouds. Now, in upcoming videos, in upcoming series, what's coming, Sazal? We just covered the introduction here. We are here today, right? Just the introduction. What's coming in the next video series? Yeah. So. The way we have looked at uh, the overall uh, solution or the life cycle of any data center or VM or application, it goes through major four stages. Provisioning, we first provisioning the services, mm -hmm. and then you configure them, you monitor, manage them, and use that feedback to build a better architecture. So we are going to talk about various VMware products. Um, when you start with ARIA automation and pipeline to see how we can provision services across VMware Cloud in a multi-cloud environment, we can see we can, how we can consistently configure the state of those deployment, manage, configure, and manage uh, to our config or guardrail, and then uh, how we can uh, move on to the monitoring and managing solutions using ARIA operations, operations for networks, for logs, or uh, probably a combination of all of that, how everything ties together. Mm -hmm and then give you that end-to-end -end solution of consistent multi-cloud manageability. And then near the end, we can talk about architectures, what the best practices, how to build a multi-cloud solutions or super cloud solution. So all in the upcoming series of videos. Yeah, sounds great. As Sozal said, this is going to be a multi-part video series covering all these aspects of VMware solutions that provides you the consistent operation automation, security uh, and the visibility right so it's gonna be an interesting series of videos so stay tuned everyone bye for now bye bye